Welcome to another video. Let's start with the most basic question. How is an angle formed? Well, an angle is formed by two sides at a vertex. So let me explain that. You see, this is what you call a line, just like the number line. It goes on forever in either directions. You see that? Just like this, that's a number line. But if I decide to end this perpetual extension and I say, hey, this ends here, we no longer call this a line, it is called a ray. Now, see this point is called the terminal point. It only has one terminal point. The other end never ends. That doesn't sound right. The end never ends? Okay. So, it has just one terminal point. If this terminal point is shared with another ray, like this, then an angle has been formed. So, really, this is the assumption we make. We assume that this ray has moved up. Okay? It has moved up because what it's trying to do is to go on a journey. Okay? The Babylonians used to see the sun, uh, the, the, the earth would move around and go back to the original spot. The moon will move around. So the same thing. So this ray turns about a fixed point. So this fixed point is what we call the vertex. And if this was the first ray that we're focused on, where we think this, the, the journey is starting from, we call it the initial side. So this is a side, and this is another side. This side where the journey ends is called the terminal side. The terminal side. So in between the initial side and the terminal side is where you find the angle. And the angle is just a measure of rotation. Okay? Remember, an angle is a measure of rotation. If this thing goes all the way and comes back to where, it's, where it started, then it's said to have gone through a full revolution. Okay? It has gone through a full revolution. It's turning about the vertex, mm -hmm. gone through a full revolution. But if it does not complete the revolution, then we just want to say, how much of that revolution did it complete? And that's the essence of this thing we call an angle. So, clarify that initial side, terminal side, the vertex. So, let's go back to these definitions. What is the standard position of an angle? And then we're going to move all the way to um, the x and y plane that we have okay the coordinate plane let's just see how we can present this so by definition see if we can just move this vertex okay to the origin on a graph and then take the initial side to be the x-axis okay or to lie on the x-axis something like this and then we'll take the terminal side to be anywhere else, somewhere here. Then this angle is said to be in the standard position. So by definition, if the initial side of an angle lies on the x-axis and the vertex of that angle lies at the origin, then the angle we're talking about is in the standard position position. So remember that. That's all you need to know. The standard position of an angle is that position such that the initial side lies on the x-axis and the vertex of the angle is at the origin. So this definition is done. Now let's go to the second one. Why are some angles positive? Why are some angles negative? So you must get this that all angles are measured in the counterclockwise direction. So, as you're looking at me, I'm going to turn my back, okay? When you're measuring an angle, 
you must always go in this direction. If you follow the standard procedure and you follow the rule, the convention, then the angle you measure starting from here in this direction is always positive. So, for example, the angle that I have here is supposed to be a positive angle. So, I might call this, say, 30 degrees or 45 degrees or 60 degrees or whatever degrees because I am going in this direction. So, so let me make this more accurate. So, let me say this is about 43 degrees. Okay? Because I am going in the... Starting from here, if I choose to measure my angle in this direction, okay, and say I have this terminal side here, and I have an angle of say 65 degrees. You see this angle is a negative angle because I have gone in the clockwise direction. So the clockwise direction gives you negative angles, the the counterclockwise direction gives you positive angles. So, this is taken. Now, I've explained number three, initial and terminal sides. So, for example, the terminal side of this angle is this one, is this line, or this ray, and the terminal side for this angle is this ray. So, finally, what does co-terminal angles, um, the term, what does the term mean? What we're saying is, This is the terminal side for this angle 43. I'm just going to make it easier for us, so I'm going to change this to 45. Okay? This is 45. If you draw an angle, or if you try to represent an angle, such that by the end of your whole going around, it ends up ending here. It has the same terminal side as this angle. Then you say that both of them terminate at the same point. Let me explain it to you. Let's take another color. So let's say I want to draw um, angle 405. Well, you would say 405 degrees is not, it's even beyond 360 degrees, and that's the point. So 405 degrees, this is how I'm going to draw it. This is 90 degrees plus 90, that's 180, plus 270. You see that? Now that's 360 degrees, but what I want to sketch is 405 degrees. So I've gotten to 360. For me to get 405, I need to add another, I need to keep going until I get to 45. So you see, I have sketched 405 degrees, but it appears to have ended on the same line as my original 45 degrees. So because both of them ended on the same terminal side, you say that they are co-terminal. That's the meaning of co-terminal angles. So 45 degrees and 405 degrees are co-terminal. Now you can start figuring out what else could be co-terminal angles. Now, well, I chose 405 degrees because I wanted 405 degrees and 45 degrees because both of them are positive angles. That's what you get. But is it possible for me to have an angle that is not greater than 360 degrees, yet it is co-terminal with 45 degrees? Yes. It will be if I did not start in this direction, if I went in this direction, I'm going to end up here. So let's experiment with that. So let's say I want to create an angle that's going to end up here. Okay? Now, I start with this. This is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, but I want it to end here. So I already have 270. For me to get here, that's plus, four, because this is 45, this has to be 45. So it's going to be 45 plus 270 degrees. 45 plus 270 degrees. Remember, going in this direction means your angle is negative. 
okay so this is going to be 315 degrees negative so i can also say that negative 315 degrees and 45 degrees and 405 degrees are all coterminal angles because they end up touching the same terminal side on the chart that I have. I know this is looking a bit messy, but we can take other examples. But that's the whole idea about coterminal angles. Once you know where the terminal side is, any angle you draw, okay, as long as it ends on that line, is coterminal with any other angle that you sketch. Now, sometimes you may have to go around seven or eight times depending on how big the angle is. Let's take just one more example to illustrate what coterminal angles are. Okay, I have a question on the board. We're supposed to find one positive angle and one negative angle that are coterminal with 3 pi over 4 radians. You see, I have changed the angle measure from degrees to radians. Now, if you're not so used to working with radians, this is what I recommend. If this is a test, um, you just on a small piece of paper or in one corner, quickly change this angle and convert it to degrees. All you have to do is replace the pi with 180 degrees, okay? So I would say that three pi over four, I'm gonna say this is the same thing as three times 180 over four, okay? That's gonna be 135 degrees that's a very just replace the pi with 180 degrees and you're good okay so we're talking about 135 degrees but if you already know what 3 pi over 4 radians is you should just do that mind you you have to leave your answer in radians because the question is in radians this is just supposed to help you find the location now let's go back to the original thing so what I'm gonna do first is to make a sketch of this I know that this is going to be in the second quadrant and this is going to be something like this okay so my angle is going all the way here and this angle is 3 pi over 4 so this angle here is 3 pi over 4 so all I need to know is I need another angle that will be coterminal a positive remember one positive and one negative if an angle is positive then it must go in this direction if it is negative it must go in this direction so firstly let's look for an angle that is positive for an angle to be positive and coterminal with another angle then that angle has to go twice remember that okay so this is what we're going to do I'll take the blue marker and I'm going to trace this so we want it to end here so we're going to go Firstly, we're going to take 360 degrees, then the second time we need to add this. So when you go the first time, remember that one revolution is 2 pi. Then the next time you go, you need to add this angle to it, plus 3 pi over 4. Okay, so if you add this to this, this is going to be 8 pi plus 3 pi, that's 11 pi over 4. So our first answer is going to be the positive angle that has gone around has to be 11 pi over 4. Where do we write it? Let's write it here with a blue uh, marker or put it here. So this angle is 11 pi over 4. That's what you get from this summation. Okay? Um, 11 pi over 4 is number the first part. So positive angle positive coterminal angle is 11 pi over 4. So the second part of this is to look for an angle that is an angle that is negative and coterminal with 3 pi over 4. Let's do that. By the way, if you don't know what 11 pi over 4 is, like I said, you need to replace this with 180 degrees and then you know what your answer is. It's going to be 45 times 11. That's going to be um, 495 degrees. Okay, so let's go to the second one. A negative, negative coterminal angle is. 
So if it's a negative angle and it's coterminal with 3 pi over 4, if it's a negative angle, it has to go in the clockwise direction. So let's use the red one. And it's going to go this way. Goes and ends here on the same terminal side. And what will that angle be? Well, I know if I go from here to here, this is going to be 180 degrees or what we call pi. So I'm going to put pi here. Then what do I have to add? Well, I know this is 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. So here it's going to be um, pi plus pi over 4. Well, pi plus pi over 4 is going to be 5 pi over 4 is 5 pi over 4 radians. We forgot to write radians in this case. Radians, right. And remember that because we went in the clockwise direction, the angle we get in this journey must be negative. So this is the negative version, okay, just as requested by the question. Okay, so um, the positive version will be 11 pi over 4, the negative version will be negative 5 pi over 4, and both of them are coterminal with 3 pi over 4. Now, this second part could be a little easier than um, if you were looking for the positive, and this is what it is. It actually it's the same thing. Because you see that all you have to do is subtract 3 pi over 4 from the total, you're going to get the negative portion. So another way of getting this, instead of doing pi plus um, pi over 4, which you have to also calculate, you might as well say, I'm going to subtract 3 pi over 4 from the total revolution to get the negative portion that is coterminal with it. And that's going to be, let's do that with a white piece of chalk you're going to say it's the total, which is 2 pi, the complete revolution, minus 3 pi over 4. And guess what your answer is going to be? It's going to be this. But remember to make it negative, okay? You have to remember to put the negative sign. This is going to give you 5 pi over 4, but because you went in this direction to get it, it has to be the negative version, so there has to be a negative beside it because it's a negative angle. I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section, like the video and share the video and subscribe to this channel and don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.